Hi there, welcome to Thoughts from a Car, another belated episode. My name is Carl, I'll be your host for the day. And today I think I just want to talk about vacations. Vacations are wonderful things. I'm looking forward to having one later this year. I'm going to surprise myself, even I don't know where I'm going. Uh, but I'll be taking Nikki with me, so we will be having a vacation. Uh, it's been a long time since I've actually had a proper break. I mean, we did the... Um, Forest Rock last year which was beautiful it was up on Lake Muskoka and it was a uh, five day break in a log cabin by the lake and we did pretty much nothing except surf the internet, swim uh, and eat that was it, not even any beer I know um but the thought of vacations now reminds me of all the previous vacations that I've been on throughout my life. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes boring everybody rigid with the details of that. Standing up before I can even remember, back in Yorkshire, as a child, I would be taken with the family to go to Skegness in Lincolnshire, which is a terrific little seaside town. If you like it's a terrific little seaside town. Um, not a great deal of anything going on there. As I got older, um, couldn't afford vacations, didn't really do anything. Long gap in between. Next big vacation was back in Skegness, actually at a, a, a Butlins camp. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Uh, with my mom and my Aunt Lillian. And it was horrendous because the um, I was 13 and I really didn't want to spend my vacation with my mom. As you can imagine, as a 13-year-old in a camp full of teenage girls. Anyway. There we go. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. Some people can't bloody drive. It's supposed to be a filter line. You're supposed to merge in seamlessly with the traffic. Not pace it and then slow down so you end up both stopping. That really is stupid, dangerous. And how the hell did she get a license? Anyway. Vacations. Skip ahead. Because I was getting sidetracked here. I've been to lots of lovely places in my life. Uh, first proper real vacation I started having was with Linda and the kids, which was um, we go to Primrose Valley near Filey in Yorkshire. It's between Scarborough and Bridlington. And we took the next door neighbours with us as well, Colin and Julie Vickers, uh, and Colin and Glennis. Um, yeah, let's not talk about that. Um, it was fun. It was another holiday camp. Not a great deal for the adults, but the kids loved it. And because they were off doing things, so did we. We used to walk up and down the beach of Filey when the tide was out. And that was good. That was where I learned to swim to France for a cheap cigarette. It's an old joke. It's so cold in the North Sea that if you walk in there, there's a very good chance you'll die of hypothermia. No word of a lie. So I like swimming, but I wasn't going to get undressed. So I just weighed out fully dressed. I was a strong swimmer. And I do remember somebody saying, where are you going? You're going to be okay. And I'm like, I'm going to France for cheap cigarettes. Train tracks. And that was the... Uh, most memorable part of that trip in that time. Moving on from there, after we all kind of went our own separate ways, the first actual vacation I had was with a girlfriend called Karen. And went to Ibiza. There you go. Beautiful place. I love that whole thing. One side of the island is party central. It's 24-7. Uh, been back again. You get off the plane at 6 a.m., the cab takes you into town, you start drinking. It's a 24-7 place. Uh, the other side of the island is olive groves, uh, private secluded beaches and coves, um, all the jellyfish you would ever want to get stung by. 
that's another story. And renting a, a Jeep, a Suzuki Jeep, and going exploring. Complete madness, but beautiful. Beautiful. I love that place. I would go back in a heartbeat. That was actually possible because of Lynn, who I later became acquainted with more closely. Uh, because I've been talking about getting a passport for years and never got around to it, she actually literally dragged me to the college in South Croydon in London, where I was working at the time. At about 8.30 at night, we both had a couple of beers. I was out with the, with the crew from work, which is how I met her. And she's, um, come on, let's go, and drags me. Throws me in a photo booth, takes photographs, takes me back with a completed passport, gets my then employer to sign and stamp it on the back as a counter signatory, and it's in the mail before I knew it was happening. So, without that, I would never have made it to Ibiza. I would never have made it to Portugal. I would never have made it to Tunisia. I would never have made it to Turkey, Greece, Spain, Italy, or France. Never mind Canada. But there's so many places, and that's all because she dragged me kicking and screaming. I didn't want to go, because uh, the bar was open. Uh, kicking and screaming to South Croydon College, threw me in a photo booth and got my photograph pictures taken. Thank you. Never forget that, and everything else. Anyway, vacations. The best one, I recall, was actually with Lynn. Um, it was in Portugal. It was the wedding of Portugal for 40 years, and we jumped in a... Uh, well, uh, her two kids had gone off to spend time with their father. She was worried and depressed. So I just booked tickets, flight only, to, well, flight and hotel, to Portugal for the week while they were gone. In February, when is February in 40 years, we got there, the place was full of Brits, the worst bad kind, the tourists from hell. They, the chips don't taste the same, the tea's awful, nobody speaks English, why can't they have real beer? Embarrassing. So we had a... Uh, get together as a group of tourists as you always do when you get to the hotel and the reps start telling you well this is this excursion this is that excursion a trip here and it'll cost x amount of dollars and pounds and we thought no we don't really want to do that because we don't want to be with these assholes so one of the trips was a, a, a jeep safari they go off road in a in a, an open jeep and I'm like, for the price of that, we could rent a car for three days and go off on our own and do something fun. Let's do that. So we did, just to get away from these guys. First day, we were in Faro, or Podimeo, uh, just west of Albufeira, on the south coast. The Algarve, don't you know? Um, the first day we went west, ended up at the Capo de San Cristóvão, which is the fortress citadel of Henry the Navigator the gentleman that allegedly trained Christopher Columbus to sail. Didn't do a great job because, as you know, Christopher Columbus didn't find America for the longest time. He thought it was the Indies. Anyway, that's a, about 300 foot drop from the walls of the fortress straight down a cliff to the Atlantic. Fantastic view. 200 foot wide stone compass that you can walk across and it's got point Every point on the compass has a, a city and a distance marked on it. If you ever get a chance, go there. But be careful when you're driving because the roads go from tarmac or asphalt, depending who you ask, to gravel road with no warning. The roads there are actually pretty bloody awful. I kid you not, I came to a T-junction and I was looking for a road out of the town, Albufeira, and I didn't know which way to go. And there were signs for the airport and it said, airport this way not kidding both directions I was locked in that town for an hour I couldn't get out of the place we were just going around in circles pissing ourselves laughing it was hilarious but anyway that was the one we went west day two we went north up into the mountain no 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 day two we went east and that's when we did the Albufeira and did the 
can't find your way home thing. That was fun. Uh, day three, we went up into the mountains, the Montfichet Mountains, which you have to go through the cork forest to get to. Port Portugal is the uh, largest producer of cork in the world, cork for your bottles, etc. Um, I think it's something like 94% of all cork in the world comes from here. So we were there at the top of the mountain and there's a beautiful little restaurant where you can sit and it's on the highway, it's built into the side of the mountain, it's a 45 degree mountain and the restaurant comes out here, it's on stilts. So you're sitting literally looking down a thousand foot drop. That was really good. But on the way to the top it got really cloudy because it was the wet of February on record. So you couldn't see zip from the top of the mountain. So it was a bit of a bust. On the way down, it got a little exciting. We did, um, this is a mountain, you've got to switch back roads. And as we were going across the zip, the uh, jeep from the excursion went flying straight across the road in front of us. And it was full of the people from our hotel. So I looked at Lynn, and Lynn looked at me, and I'm like, it's a rental. So I hung a right, and as I followed the jeep off the trail, it was fantastic. You've got this safari-style jeep with something like an 18-inch clearance being chased down the side of a mountain by two idiots in a Fiat Tipo with something like three inches of clearance above the exhaust, bouncing off rocks, ditches, logs. We went past a guy who must have seen the jeep every day. His home was in the forest. He was wheeling a barrel full of logs. And he never batted an eyelid as the jeep went past, but he looked twice when we saw us. <laughs> we waved. It was fun. We laughed all the way. <laughs> the jeep driver was most unimpressed because we were showing him up. Because these guys had paid good money to have a, a real exclusive kind of an experience. And they're looking out the back and they're seeing the guy from their hotel, just following them in a rental car. <laughs> it was fun. Anyway, the uh, guy with the uh, Jeep decided to take it personally and he, he started going off route places where only he would be able to go. And we were seriously running a risk of ripping the back end off the, the Tipo because it's only a little car, like about the size of a, uh, a bit bigger than a Mini. Anyway, um, they went across, we came to the next road, we crossed about two roads going down the switchback, uh, and we just said, that's it, we'll hang a left, and, and we did, and we went back on our way, and we had a wonderful time, all the way till we saw the Dallas Circus. The Dallas Circus is wonderful. We were driving along a dirt road, because it does literally turn from gravel, uh, sorry, asphalt, tarmac, into gravel, and which in the wettest February for 40 years turns into mud. We followed a cab. We were about 100 yards behind this cab, figuring he knew where he was going, and we didn't care, we were just out to have a drive. And I kid you not, as we were driving along, the cab started to get smaller. I'm trying to figure out exactly how it's getting smaller, and then realized he's sinking in the mud. He eventually came to a complete stop. We stopped about a hundred yards behind him because we thought it's wet up there <laughs> and um, we took a wide berth around him and he's up to his doors in mud he couldn't open the door to get out he couldn't drive forward he couldn't drive back he's stuck he's on the radio he's obviously calling a tow truck or something come and get me we didn't want to stop because he'd sink too so we just kept going um, and as we're driving past him He's past a circus on the other way, and he's an elephant. Just looking at us as if to say, bloody tourists. And on the side of the truck, he said, Dallas Circus. And I turned to Lynn and I said, boy, are they lost. It's this bloody road sign. It's deep in around here. Anyway, that was that. Speaking of road signs, last thing before I go. We asked... The, uh, the barman at the hotel was a really great place to go, local, soak up the atmosphere. And he said there's a village down the, 
down the way there, about 20 minutes away, about 5 kilometers. Um, you go down there, you go onto the beach, the fishing boats come in, they land sardines, Portugal's famous for sardines, sardines. You eat them live on the beach, they grill them, well not live, you know what I mean. They throw them off the boat and they, uh, they, they grill them right there while you wait, couldn't be fresher, it's fantastic, there's a market, there's local culture and all that kind of thing, and we love that stuff. So, okay, let's go, how do you get there? Follow this road away you go. So we tried that, an hour later, we're nowhere near. We drove through cabbage fields. I did. Cabbage sticking out of the rear bumpers. That was good. And everything. We could not find this place. And we kept passing a sign for Desvio. So we figured out, you know what, we can't find this place where we're going. I can't remember the name of the place we were looking for now. But it's like, let's follow the signs to this Desvio. There must be something there. A cafe or a, a, a restaurant or a market or something. So, okay, let's go there. So we start following the signs for Desvio, and we're following it, and we're following it, and we're following it, and it just seems to be getting nowhere. And an hour later, we're right back where we started, literally, same intersection. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I've had enough of this. Well, let's go back to the hotel, ask the guy what's going on, grab a map, get something to eat, and we'll regroup, and we'll think it again, and we'll figure it out. So, okay, that's what we did. We found our way back to the hotel easily enough. Uh, I went into the bar and said, hey, so this is what happened, and uh, told him he's looking for this Desvio, and his shoulders start shaking, and he's obviously trying not to laugh. I'm like, look, I, what's the joke? Well, you know, I've got a sense of humor. Obviously, something's funny, but, but what is it? He says, you're looking for Desvio. He says, yeah, Desvio. Desvio is Portuguese for detour. Still laugh about that one because I do have a sense of humour. That barman, a great tip because he laughed and he had a sense. Of, I think we were the nicest thing that happened to him that week. Really, seriously, those tourists were nasty people. Other things happened in that hotel which I will not discuss here. Suffice to say, if I never see any of those people again, we'll all be happy. Uh, but that was one example of a holiday. Now, that wasn't planned. I literally got the tickets off the net. We went, boom, let's just grab a car, let's drive, let's see what happened. We saw the place where Christopher Columbus was trained. We saw the pork, cork forests of Portugal. We saw the Dallas Circus. We saw a cab sinking into the mud. We did a Jeep safari. We didn't plan any of it. The best vacations are the ones you just jump in and go. So don't spend too much time overthinking things. Go for it. You're going to have a lot of fun. A real lot of fun. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm done for now. It's been a long time. I'm sorry about that. I keep saying I'm going to make it more regular and I haven't. I'm not going to say it anymore because you don't believe me at this point. But I'm going to say that I enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to the next one. So next time we'll talk about something else. This one's just been about vacations and seize the day. Car Bad interruption there. Thank you for putting up with my rambling. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure to listen to you. Your comments are much appreciated. Um, good or bad. If there's something you want me to ramble on about, you just tell me and I will do that. That's enough for now. I've had enough. I'm going. Uh, catch you later. Thanks for listening again. My name's been Carl. This has been Thoughts from a Car. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.